Hello, Sandra Umbleton here. We're speaking in the Divine Temple of the Holy Grail, where we are receiving intel from Creator Source, from the Void, from the Mystery. As a matter of fact, I've had like three, I, I don't know if they're really, really large crows or they're really, really ravens. <laughs> There's a fourth off and on now, but for the last, last year, Three big ones so all around my house all the time. So I know that Crow and Raven is about going into the mystery, going in beyond, through the veil, and receiving information. Receiving that which is to be, that which is to, to come, and receiving that, and then bringing it into reality, bringing it through uh, the spoken word to bring it into the collective consciousness, the Christ consciousness. Light the candle, Sandra. Yes, we're going to bring in the Holy Spirit. Bring in Father God, Mother God, Christ Jesus, Divine Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth. And reveal. Well, the energy of revealing. Revealing truth. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go with um, what's going to come through today. Uh, what we're... But we're going to uh, to tap in on is it are we going to address fear or take a break uh, the one thought and then take a break take a break first just a quick note for star seeds is to monitor your intel monitor yourself in that you are taking a break from the amount of energy that's coming through via information, trying to sift it out, constantly seeking for answers. And you want to know the truth and you want to know the answers, but you're so like, I've got to find it, got to be there, got to be in it, got to be vigilant. Um, that's a recipe to wear yourself out. And so it's a recipe for falling lower into frequency because any energy evolving around the 3D world and what's going on is a lower frequency. So even though you're searching for the information in that uh, arena, uh, you know, news, video, um, internet, whatever, it's like you're still in a search for information, but the information, if you're looking for information that's current about the world, it pulls you into the 3D matrix, so your energy is going to drop. And you might not be aware of that. You might be meditating. You might be affirming that you're a spiritual being. Uh, but that's mind. That's thought. That's mind. That's thought. It The power comes in the realization when you know, when you receive, hey, wait a minute, my purpose is to be here at this time, to teach what I know, and to bring, bring that light, the anchor in that light uh, that comes from God. We're, anchoring it in and we're the ones bringing it in we're the ones bringing it in and so the the worrying about this person and this person and this person and this person and this person um, when we are in our center point if we are sending our energy over to this person through worry through trying to control through trying to inform through trying to um, change we're putting we're willing a lot of our god energy into others we're willing our will into other people and so that's a drain that that's like it's a whirlpool it just sucks sucks you right into it because it, you're putting your energy out there and that that will drain you guilty <laughs> not telling me something I'm not doing for a reason. Like, I need to hear this. So right now what I've discovered is um, I'm being uh, shut down. Um, I want to shop at this place. I want to go and be up at this place. I want to have this person contact with this person. Um, uh, maybe I want to uh, teach yoga. In the physical, have, a, have my own class again, okay? So all these thoughts that you get, thoughts you receive, 
It's just thoughts about things that you'd like, things that you want. I want to go to this store and shop here because I meet nice people. And um, I can be myself here. But then all of a sudden, an energy comes through somebody and it says to you, well, you know what? We, uh, we don't want you in our store. We don't want you in our establishment. You, you got to go. You got to go because you're just too spiritual and I can't control you. <laughs> and I never know what comes out. So uh, I have to protect my business and make my store safe from anybody that would speak truth or that would be there because spirit guided them. So you're believing it's a spirit connection. But what you're finding is that the person who's at the top the, uh, the owner, his ideology, ideology, well, will filter down into his staff, unless they're very strong spirit warriors, which that's the case here, and it will attract uh, purchasers that are pretending to be spiritual but aren't, Pretend, pretending to be spiritual but they're not they're pretending to be spiritual and some might want to be want to be or on their path and those are the ones that are inquisitive those are the ones that are asking questions the real people who want to go quickly along on their journey they're asking questions they're asking questions they're aware they're open they're aware and open to receiving messages. To receiving messages. Oh my, terrible. To receiving messages from spirit quickly. Quickly. So if you're on the, I want to get on the spiritual train, I would make it quickly to the fifth dimension. Um, what do you recommend? Uh, always be asking questions. Always be asking questions. Always be... Um, I've got to tilt it over here just so you can see it. If you can... There we go. Always be asking questions if you're on your spiritual path quickly. And you as a spiritual being can recognize another being in a room full of people if that being's awake because they'll have their eyes open and they'll be looking around. And they'll be making themselves aware of the store, of the room, of where they are. And they'll quickly access, they'll quickly access information within themselves of who's open here, who's alive, who's open to receive any type of truth. Because if I'm here, if God sent me to this moment, there must be somebody seeking a truth. Perhaps it's me. So I had to go to this particular store to learn a truth on the weekend. It's a truth I didn't want to see, but it was there. And it's almost like there's a time limit on how much bullshit or how much crap we can spin and how nice we can be and take all of that stuff where we don't have time for it anymore. And spirit is not gently, but one more strike, you're out. Uh, I'm not going to wait for the other strike. I can read the writing on the wall. Uh, two two uh, warnings. You better toe the line in this store. You better not touch. No, no being yourself in a spiritual store. Can you imagine? All right. So here we are. Want to be people that want to be on their path are asking questions. They're alert. And anyone who's at the head of an organization, their energy filters on down. So the, pretend, the, the pretenses you have, the beliefs you have, are conducted through you, into your business, through your staff. And so those people that you attract will adopt your, your attitude. That's why they're there. Because if you still want to be in the other reality and pretend to be spiritual, but you're not, Somebody's going to come who is spiritual and catch you doing it. And they're going to say, hey, 
good thing you got some good staff here that are spiritual. So, sometimes it happens. Like I said, it can filter down, but once in a while, God will send one or two people there to even it out if it's to be maintained. Maybe that's contradictory, but I'm sorry. I'm, what I'm trying to say is I was banned from a store. Not so many words, but I was banned from going into a store. And the person was speaking the spiritual language. Oh, I'm coming from my heart. Coming from my heart. But it was empty. It was empty. And ha one of the clues for me was he wasn't listening to anything that I said he was telling. And then at one point during the conversation, when I was speaking, he just left. And how somebody leaves a conversation is their eyes will glass over. They'll just go like, and you can see they're not there and their eyes are just like, I'm off somewhere. Because their thoughts have taken them out of the moment. So now you can assess very quickly, well, this person isn't really here. He's not in the awareness of the now and what truly has happened. He's in his head. She's in, his, in her head. She's thinking thoughts and I'm in a conversation. She's leaving. She's, sorry, what? What did you say? Now, that's okay if you're receiving a message from spirit. But in the 5D in the heavenly kingdom, what you would do in that case is, I'm sorry, I left for a moment. I was receiving a message. I really want to hear what you have to say. Could you repeat it? That's an honest, hey, I just received a message. I'm hearing something. I have the, I'm not rude. I didn't leave the conversation, but I, I was receiving a message and now I have enough awareness to realize I missed what you're saying. It's important what you're saying. Uh, please repeat it because I was receiving a message. And if you're meant to share it with them, you can. If not, you can keep it to yourself. Uh, but that's an example of um, whether you can tell you're being heard, whether you can tell somebody's being real with you. Okay? That's a big lesson to learn. And I think what's happening and why doors are shutting is because the games I was playing, which were, gee, this would be a nice place to go to meet other spiritual people. I sure hope that there's a, that this is a good place, that this is a good connection, that this is a God connection. So if it's taken away, universe is protecting me and moving me forward into a new situation. But what I'm really finding is that um, more and more things like I started are moving away from me. Places I used to go, people I used to talk to, um, beliefs I used to have, where I'm going, what I'm doing. It's, it's almost like I'm feeling all my friends, everything's leaving and I'm isolated. And I know I'm not alone in this. I know I'm not alone in this. I know that that feeling of uh, isolation, that feeling of isolation, but I'm trying to make sense of that, uh, that action by spirit and why spirit would choose to, uh, to do that. And um, I believe, there we go. Um, it, it's, you're meant to go more inside. You're meant to ha work on your connection with God. And I've had to make an, a, I had to learn something about myself. God protects me. And usually when I'm having things removed from me, it's a time when God's saying, don't go out in the 3D energy. Don't go out and put yourself out there. It's pretty I'm fearful or you know negative right now so we don't want that to interfere with your transmissions with your uh speaking when we need you to speak so we have to remove distractions and take you away from places where you're not being honored take you out of situations and relationships where you're not being honored and that honoring starts with the self when you honor yourself and you say, um, yeah, I guess, you know, it's important that I practice self-love right now because, you know, I don't know everything's going on. I don't know what's going to come through me when I stand up here. Um, I'm just, 
I look at what's happened around me, the things that are going on in my life, the stories that are come up, coming up in the now or what I share, because you always begin in the now. So if you want to know how things are going for you, look at what's going on around you now. But it's the discernment as to what the true meaning is of what's going around you now. Now, I'm being made aware of that I'm, uh, God's got a, a close watch on me right now. So be small, be quiet, be meditating, and be happy, be peaceful. Just everything's going to come. And don't unnecessarily obsess about something or worry about something. Uh, Sandra, talking to myself. It's a struggle with it too. It's the surrendering of what is. I'm where I am, where I need to be right now. Not I wish it was better, not I wish it was somewhere else, not this needs to happen. It's the, it's the constant surrendering to the authority of God. It's a constant surrendering to having the belief that Father's got you exactly where you are. And even though you might not be getting what you want right now, or things are a little difficult right now, and whatever you're dealing with, and we're all feeling it. I think it's that separation. I think we're moving into a separation and it, it's almost like everyone's stuff's coming out, but love overrides all the hurt, all the problem of all the lifetimes. And you forgive everybody anyway. So if this is a division, if they're saying the two planets are splitting, if they're saying the two ways of thinking are splitting, whatever it is that they are saying is happening, if it truly is, then this is a time of goodbye. This is a time of um, gratitude. That's what I got this morning too. This is a time of gratitude. Gratitude. And how do we know? Because and we're going to write it, the decision has already, has already been made. And now we're seeing, now we are seeing now we are seeing the unfoldment, unfoldment of it. In other words, us getting mad at somebody that, that they're not doing what we feel they should be doing or what we feel they should not be doing. When you move into the awareness knowing that this lets this is just takes a load. This just takes a load off your back coming into this awareness. All right? <clears throat> the decision has already been made. You have no power. You have no power. No power. To change it. To change it or anyone else. You have no power. You have no power. The decision has already been made. And now all we're doing is watching it unfold. I still think there's um the back the the one side is pushing like heck to get as many recruits before before uh, the shift, so there there might be a bit of a, a window still, is there? Yes, yes. There's still a window. There's a small there's there is a small window, but.
it, it's about standing your ground, standing strong in God. Standing strong. Standing strong in God. And when you stand strong in God, in God when he brings you to someone, you're going to know right away. Like, when you're with someone who's already committed, they've committed. Let it go. Don't have any more uh, interaction with them unless they initiate it. There's going to be people you love that have made a different choice. And when you move into the thought, the decision's already been made, who are you to interfere? Who are you to play God Meaning, oh no, you're wrong and I'm right. So when we let go of having to be wrong or right, and we bring in Star Seas, the awareness that this is a time of goodbye, and you're having to say goodbye to these people, what would you want to say to them? Not, you stupid idiot. How about I miss you? I'm gonna, I love you so much, I'm going to miss you. How could you take yourself? there and not here but the decision's already been made so if you're gracious under god you'll respect their decision and you will express gratitude for them in the time you've had in your life express gratitude be gracious and show compassion this is you showing compassion who's listening to this Showing compassion. Don't make them feel bad. Don't make them feel bad for a decision that's already been made and now they're here and they're going through this process of a decision that's already made. They've already made the decision. They're at peace with it. They're at peace with it. And the confusion around it is what some people are stalling and I'm probably very much guilty of knowing exactly who's who's who is going uh and, and you know um and then i know i can't stop it i'm delaying it with information but in my heart i won't stop it that would be god that did that that would be god that changed that around not me so if I'm dealing with two people that I know have made that decision to go because the decision's already been made, now there's no more argument. Now there's no fighting. I'm not fighting against them. I'm not, you know, shoving all in sorts of, of information at them. Well, gracious gratitude will come back. Express gratitude, showing compassion. Put that back up again here, probably. What I'm trying to do is... is um, how can we make this easier? Stop fighting. There, there. This is Joe Goldsmith. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. And you stop fighting when you cease to resist. See, what is? What is happening? Cease to resist what is happening. And now you watch. Now you become the watcher. The watcher. You just watch. T-C-H. Just watch. Give support. Give support. Remind people why they're loved. Remind them why they're loved. Remind them why they're loved. All the good times that you've had. All the good times. Times you've shared. You've shared. You want to be supportive and compassionate. Don't make them feel bad. I, I, I one of my friends has made some decisions and, uh, now she's having a problem with the decision she's made. I'm not going to ream her, ream her out and tell her what an idiot she is or that she's not following what I'm telling her. 
She's doing what's right for her. She's doing what her belief system is telling her to do. And she's going to live with the consequence of that decision, whether she's feeling it's informed, but maybe it's not what you think it is. So that could only exist. It's almost like if someone like God put a sack over their head and they're going, la, 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 can't hear you, can't hear, already made the decision, I'm going over here. Decision's already been made. So you can calm down and watch without trying to control anyone and what they do. You can give them information if they're if they come to you and ask for it. Boy, was that a hard lesson. Oh my lord, years ago. Trying to learn that. You can't come at people and get a little you have to wait till they come to you. Oh I still don't follow that rule. <laughs> I have times when I do though. I have times when I realize they're not, they don't, they're, our paths are different, our journeys are different, not better than or less than, it's just our, our journeys are different. And so when you respect the fact that we can walk side to side and somebody else can have a different journey than you and make a different choice than you, but what you want to do is bring into the moment the gratitude that of the time you spent with that person on this journey so far. So what if our, our life is, is uh, our slate is swept clean? What if all sins, trans transgressions, anything you've ever done in all your lifetimes, this is the time it's going, we're gonna, we're gonna erase all that. We're not gonna remember that anymore. Gone from your memory. We're starting new. We're starting from where we are right now in this moment, in this reality, beholding the beauty, beholding each other's spiritual essence, feeling one with the universe, God, and everything around you. What a wonderful place to start. Let's start there. Let's start and give ourselves the best. More than we can imagine is what God holds. I cannot imagine what's in store for us, but it'll be fantastic. It'll be fantastic because we've made the choice to go with God. Hey, eh? Right? We've already made our decision. We've already made our decision, made our decision to go with God. And this too, this too, has already been decided it's already been decided it's already been decided you too where you're going has already been decided so don't worry about it don't fear it don't go kicking and screaming trying to drag as many people with you as you can this is meant for you this is meant for you to know this is meant for you to realize that God's been so good to you all along and brought all these wonderful people. But there comes a time when our when our differences and our journeys separate because we've got different lessons to learn. And that's basically it's like it's like graduating school. When you leave high school, you leave all your buddies and you go off to university. There's new buddies there you haven't met yet, but you're sad because not all your buddies are going with you. So you're graduating onto university. And this process we're going is for the graduates, for the ones that have moved along in awareness and living and journeys and, and finally got to the end of the road where they realized, oh, all I had to do was seek God first. And all, all other things <laughs> will be handed, will be handed to you. That's all you had to do. And this lifetime, you figured it out. You went, I did seek God first. I did want to know God. I did believe in truth. Truth is the cornerstone. It's the throne that God sits on. God sits on a throne of truth. 
To know your truth is to know the truth of God, because God is, God's consciousness is expressed through you as an individual. God sees his kingdom, experiences it through us. Joel Goldsmith and Joel S. Goldsmith. And as I, the more I study and the more I understand and the more I come into the knowing of that relationship where you are one, you become one with God. And there's not a thing you do without asking or going anywhere because you don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> you want to make sure you're always, um, you want to make sure you're always listening to that voice that guides you. Hardest part is when the voice is quiet for a while. And then you go, oh, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do now? Now, now, now. Just sit down. <laughs> oh, darn it. Just sit and do nothing. You just want me on meditation detail? Yes. Go on. Go sit on your chair. You're on meditation detail. Okay, fine. Fine, fine. There's a lot of people out there saving the world, doing this and that. Now I'm just meditating. That's your job. That's what you're here to do because you do a good job when you do it. All right. So... It's like getting your job assignment and arguing with it and then coming to terms with, well, I guess that's okay. I guess I can do that, right? So we are on that progression of moving into the acceptance of, again, what is. And what it is we're guided to do in the moment. All right, so, uh, so here we go. It was pretty good stuff there. Okay, anything else? Um, is there anything else that needs to be said? Just, um, if your world is changing, it's because the world is changing. And whenever God takes something away, he's got a better path for you. All right? And I forget that sometimes, and I get so caught in, but I want this, but I want this. Can it be this way? Please, 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 God. And it's that um, lack of understanding that, wait a minute, if I'm meant to be somewhere or have something happen, it's going to happen because God's going to make it happen, not me. No matter how much I want or cry and whine or demand or ask, it just diminishes that relationship because you don't want to be the one to tell God what to do. That's too much responsibility. So I'm really glad to surrender it all to him because he would know better than me and many times has proved that. <laughs> we proved that. But me, oh no, I want to do this now. I'm still arguing. Oh, I think if I cease arguing, then whatever's meant to happen will come. And I'm, I, you know, I'm human. I'm going through it too. Um, okay. I'm going to do one more quick video after this. And it's about the one thought. Okay. Talk in a bit.